Um, hi, everyone. Uh, again, uh, continuing on with the containers discussion. Um, so we, we at Indiana University have uh, been using containers since beginning of 2017, sort of uh, somewhat of an early adapters. And uh, I think that's how we started uh, presenting our experiences uh, at various workshops and somehow we became sort of experts at this stuff, even though we did not develop or build any of this stuff ourselves. Um, so I manage the applications and user support team at Indiana University. Um, and uh, we, we, the first container application that we heard of was Shifter actually. And uh, that was also late 2016 and um, that was way too early uh, for Shifter and Cray and we had an old Cray. I think we had Cli 4 or Cli 5 back then and it was not easy to uh, make it work, install it. It was not smooth. We, we had so many packages and uh, modules missing. So we gave that up and then we found Singularity and it was not again easy to install on the Cray. We uh, had a couple of um, modules missing, but on our Red Hat 6 uh, cluster back then, it was super easy to make it work. And so that's how we got started on that. And uh, after that, uh, since 2017, we, we uh, heard about Charlie Cloud and that is something um, we'll try after going back. Uh, and most of this stuff, uh, the driver has been users coming to us and saying, I have this or that container that I want to run and we find a solution for them. So, um, and that, that has been uh, one of the uh, main reasons for us running containers. And on top of that, we also had a few applications that we could not natively support because of the uh, older operating systems that we were running and due to GLIPC compatibilities. So those, those are some of the reasons we got started on this. Um, so um, I, I've given a similar or somewhat similar talk last year at uh, HPC XXL in New York and uh, I think some of the questions that came up uh, back then were uh, on this topic uh, for, for HPC, what brings you to containers? Is this because your uh, audience is so diverse and they do a lot of non-traditional stuff, um, how much, and, and I mean, maybe last year this was not that mainstream, but I think right now it's become pretty mainstream and probably most, if not all of you have, have containers being supported at your centers. Is that, is that right? Right. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, um, I think a good uh, chunk of you, I think, I think we've heard all three Singularity Shifter and Charlie Cloud being uh, utilized for this purpose at your centers. Um, I, I think we've had been supporting uh, containers long enough that we can now list some of the challenges of supporting containers. I've, I've, I've had a few of them listed in one of the slides. So we'll go through that. Um, and and, and speaking of challenges, if, the, if, you're, if you're running a brand new operating system, Red Hat 7 or newer or whatever else, uh, you, you get pretty much everything supported by the container uh, application that you're running and also just outright, and the, the application that you wanna build will probably just build on that latest operating system. But if you're running an older operating system, you'll have a limited feature set for, that comes with the uh, container application itself and also uh, you'll have trouble installing uh, the application that you're trying to install, so it's, it's a, sort of a double whammy. Um, so in the first 30 minutes, I will introduce uh, containers and singularity. I think, you know, I don't really need to introduce containers that's been already done. I'll just introduce singularity a little bit uh, and talk about, you know, why we went through this path and why we chose singularity, et cetera. Uh, we'll discuss some of the usage patterns at IU and uh, speak about some of the uh, features uh, that uh, Singularity provides and some of the challenges and some latest news that uh, I've uh, learned about the Singularity project. And then in the second 30 minutes, um, 
we, we can do a hands-on uh, tutorial type thing. We can go through a bunch of uh, singularity commands and uh, create some uh, containers, pull down some image files. Modi we can't really modify them, but there is an indirect way to modify them through, the, through what is called the singularity hub. Uh, we'll try that. I have 40 uh, training accounts. Uh, we can start distributing them. Uh, these are training accounts on our uh, research cluster, which is running Red Hat 7. So most features are supported. Um, I think earlier I counted 60, but I think we're down to 40, so we should be good with respect to the number of training accounts we have. Um, that's good. So containers, uh, what are containers? We, I think we, everybody knows that, but, but let me, uh, this is something I pulled from Wikipedia, so uh, it has to be true. Uh, <laughs> um, so bottom line, you know, the container is gonna share the kernel uh, of the base operating system and whatever you're running inside the container thinks that it's running on its own separate operating system and it's doing everything uh, within there and, and it's gonna be fine doing that. And for most applications, that is good enough. And, and because they're sharing, sharing the kernel and there is no if complete stack, running inside a complete stack, the performance is not degraded much, if anything at all. Um, so with respect to containers and HPC, uh, we still try to uh, install everything natively on our systems before we tell somebody, oh, we'll just put it in a container. Uh, we are really actually doing this and sometimes we spend a week before deciding, okay, we cannot install this natively, we have to go the container route. Um, so that is one of the uh, things that we are trying to stick to. And, um, but, but obviously there are things that we cannot, we know that we cannot install like TensorFlow and uh, some other deep learning stuff because of glibc incompatibility, uh, because of so many um, dependencies that they have, and at some point we'll just run into a dependency that we cannot get for the Cray, for example, uh, especially because we have an older Cray running Cli5. Um, and and I've, I haven't heard, the, I mean, so reproducibility has been uh, talked about a lot in, with respect to containers. Uh, that is definitely a feature, but I haven't run into any users explicitly saying that they are doing this because they want to do something that is reproducible. I don't, I don't know. I, so far, I'm not convinced that users care about rep reproducibility all that much. They just want to run what they want to run. That is changing a little bit, but we haven't seen that much. Um, so, uh, right, so we already talked about TensorFlow, uh, glibc, um, and, and then Docker, uh, people were also coming with Docker containers and said, you know, for example, take NeuroDebian or something else that, that is completely prepackaged. Even though uh, we were able to separately install those applications separately on our system and they were using it, but, but once the uh, container stuff was available for them, they, they preferred that uh, instead of just using the standalone applications that were installed. Um, so singularity, uh, so th this, this uh, was a, started off as an open source project out of LBL uh, and uh, it was designed specifically for HPC. Um, Greg Koser is the lead developer, and uh, th these are, uh, uh, so when I say these are specifically built for HPC, I mean they were built for multi-user environments. There isn't a single person or a single uh, group of admins using it, but rather uh, a bunch of unprivileged users are using this uh, application. Um, obviously it's not Docker but it supports uh, Docker containers and Docker Hub. You can pull stuff directly from Docker Hub without, uh, and then use, uh, when, you, when I mean pull, you can pull uh, a Docker file and then create a singularity image out of it. Um, and obviously, if you, you can also build your own singularity images via singularity build files and 
um, you can use that. It, it, it's always a single file uh, that is that has been uh, advertised as a big benefit, uh, one of the big benefits for singularity, um, and and it's easier to uh, copy around and move stuff around, I guess. Um, Right, I think that that covers that. Um, if, if you're if you're wondering why not native Docker, um, I think the top two reasons are you have to be root, or you can escalate to root if you're running Docker and if you have access to uh, the Docker process, or if you have the permission to use uh, run that process. Uh, that is one of the problems with with HPC. We have like. 50 people using the system at any given time, and we don't, we cannot have them uh, become root and check out other people's stuff on a multi-user uh, system. Um, so singularity limits the user privileges uh, and access within the container. So let's say you lo you are unprivileged user blah on when you log in and you are inside the singularity container, you, you have an interactive shell inside the container, and then you try to change user uh, and become root, it'll fail. Uh, even I, I think even if you have the root password, it'll fail. Uh, once you uh, log in uh, as a user, you cannot change that inside singularity. Um, so as I was saying, we initially started using Singularity uh, to support TensorFlow and deep learning applications on our Cray XC6 XK7 machine. Uh, but we found out that, but this, we actually went a full circle on this topic. Uh, we did this, we were supporting it, and then uh, we, we found that Anaconda somehow uh, was uh, bypassing the GLibc requirement and was able to build TensorFlow 1.1 on the Cray. So, okay, no, you don't need containers, use Anaconda and TensorFlow and you're good. But then, uh, that was six months ago, now we have TensorFlow 1.7, and Anaconda cannot do anything with 1.7, so we are going back to containers and trying to build uh, TensorFlow 1.7 inside a container for our users. Um, so, uh, on, on the Cray, we have about a, right, so we actually had to, uh, we actually uh, log the number of uh, singularity invocations uh, on all our machines, so we are able to uh, have a def definite count of how many people use it. And uh, over the last uh, 18 months, we've had um, about 50 users on our Cray. Um, we, uh, I would not say that all of them are regular active users. On a monthly basis, we have about 15 to 20 users using it. Uh, but, but I think initially, when uh, TensorFlow was only able to uh, was only available via containers, we had a bump and then went down, and maybe it'll go up again. And on our uh, Red Hat 7 machine, it is even more popular uh, because it is even more fully functional. Uh, we have about, again, 30 to 40 users uh, on a monthly basis. Um, and, and the most, uh, uh, the biggest users of, of the stuff with respect to the number of invocations uh, are people from the uh, psychology department who, who use uh, MRTRIX software uh, inside containers. They, ha they have actually pretty uh, elaborate workflows, uh, the way they run their jobs, with singularity, and they you, they go through the scheduler and everything, but but everything is sorted out for them. Um, the uh, installation and configuration is pretty straightforward. It's pretty it's just configure, make, make, install. Um, obviously, if you uh, use uh, install it as an unprivileged user, you get uh, a subset of the functionality. It's mostly useless uh, if if you do that, but but if you are a uh, if, if you install it as root, you get the full functionality, uh, and that is how what we do at IU. We, we have the uh, system admins install it and then uh, lock down the configuration file, etc., to control things. Um, you can, in the configuration file, you can decide what sort of 
file systems you want to let through inside the containers. Uh, for example, we have a GPFS file system, a Luster file system, um, slash temp, other things. Um, we can decide which of those automatically get mounted inside the container when somebody runs a container. Uh, we can also uh, control things like uh, who can own containers that are uh, executable on the system. We can have a list of usernames that are approved. Uh, we don't actually do that, but that's one of the features. We can also limit the uh, containers to a specific path. So if the container comes from a different path, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, there are various security settings that you can uh, play with. Um, it, uh, l let me describe the a typical singularity workflow. Um, so most people don't build their own container images. That is because uh, most users don't have a Linux system that they are root on available to them. That is just not the case. So they either download uh, an image from somebody, some location that is, you know, giving that image out, or maybe they will come and ask us, build this for us, and we build them, build them something and put it in place. So, but but uh, given the um, given the number of applications that need containers uh, is not a lot, we don't get these uh, requests so much. We, we have maybe a dozen or so containers that, that we have built for people and uh, we don't up to update them much. And <clears throat> the rest of them, uh, they pull something down from Docker Hub directly and save it as a file and they're good to go. So uh, this is sort of an inconvenience, but it's not that much of a big deal if you're thinking about it not being able to build your own containers, or users not being able to build their own containers. Um, so once the once you have the Singularity container, uh, you save the file, uh, you can uh, shell into it and then interactively play with things, or you can, uh, in batch mode, uh, submit uh, your jobs and then you'll have a run command that looks like Singularity exec uh, image file name and then the command you want to execute inside the image uh, and that works fine. Uh, we'll we'll uh, take a look at those commands in the during the uh, hands-on session. So uh, other uh, convenience features, you, you have the ability to control the environment within the container and outside the container. You can decide what you want to share in my environment wise, outside and inside, you can completely keep things separate or you might want to bring everything inside or et cetera. Um, if you are uh, thinking about some, uh, somehow uh, manipulating or um, having a series of container executions in your workflow, uh, you can inspect each of the container uh, via JSON uh, out, uh, to see what's in it so that uh, you can programmatically use them, run them. Um, so there is something called uh, Singularity Hub. Uh, it's, I think it's modeled uh, based on Docker Hub. So what happens here is if you create an account on Singularity Hub and um, link your GitHub account to this um, website, uh, and then make one of your GitHub repositories uh, a singularity repository. Every time you commit a change to that repository, and the change has to be a singularity uh, build file, uh, then that build file is executed on Singularity Hub and it builds an image for you. And then you can just download that image to wherever uh, you're gonna execute it. So this is basically a workaround for people who don't have their own Linux system where they can build their own containers. So in, instead of having your own system and building stuff there, you commit a file to uh, GitHub and then the image file gets built on Singularity Hub and then you download it. It works 
really well uh, and it's very uh, clever and, and I've, I've used it a bunch of times. <coughs> um, open MPI, um, so there are limitations uh, with respect to how well this works. Single node Open MPI works fine. Uh, multi node is uh, needs some hacking. You can uh, you can obviously execute uh, the same container on every node, but that's not really what we want. We want to run the same application on every node and share the same environment on every node. That doesn't work all that well. Uh, people have I mean, but they have been making rapid progress on uh, making this better and. Maybe they, have, they already have, but I haven't seen anything or done anything um, that makes me convinced that multi-node MPI works all that well, but single-node MPI works fine. Um, so, and, and GPU uh, compatibility is pretty straightforward. It just works out of the box. You just have to pass through the drivers that are on the base system through to the container, which we do on our uh, GPU system by default, so we included like three or four paths where the drivers exist, and every time a container is run on that system, those drivers are automatically bind mounted inside the container, and it just works. Um, we, we haven't seen any performance issues, uh, really, uh, and, and then there have been a few studies that, that, that show that, um, you know, containers don't really impact performance much. Um, so we've been running uh, running this for more than a year now, and, and I think these are some of the challenges uh, that we ran into. Um, so this this uh, you know somebody wants an application uh, available on the supercomputer, and you try to build it, and it doesn't work, and you tell them, oh yeah, that did not work, but we can make it work inside a container. And the user doesn't know anything about what containers are, and this becomes yet another thing that they have to learn uh, to be able to use the supercomputer. So, um, this is, I mean, I mean, I, I won't general, generalize all the users, but it depends on the personality of the per, uh, of the user. Some are, some are like, yeah, okay, some something else new I want to learn. Uh, that is so cool. But some are like, I, this is such a pain. I'll just do it on my desktop. So you have that. Um, and then, you know, it's it's hard for us to decide when to pull the give give up installing stuff natively and you know going to the container uh, instead. Uh, for, for stuff like uh, glibc incompatibility, yes, sure, we cannot ever change that, we cannot fix it, so containers, here you go. But stuff like some other application that you've never heard of, and it seems like a pretty uh, robust or a um, well put together application, has a nice manual, etc. says it can be installed on Linux, so you give it a week, you try, to install it, go through 300 dependencies, and, the, and in the end, you, it turns out it cannot be installed because dependency number 285 needs a newer glibc than what you have. <laughs> so in that case, obviously, you again go back to the containers and you feel like, ah, we should just put everything in a container. Uh, so there is that. Um, and also, we, we, we think about, uh, you know, is this user group, uh, going to be happy with the solution that we are going to give them with containers? Or will they be super irritated and be like, oh, this is, you're just making me, making us, uh, you know, go through hoops. So, uh, and, and uh, yeah. Uh, we, we do, uh, and and most of the and we have a directory uh, location on the file system where we have like half a dozen or dozen con containers available just sitting there, and we document that this container is for TensorFlow, that is for 
something else, etc. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we also have to keep in mind. I mean, not, not, uh, this this is not very obvious right away because somebody writes in and says, "I want this," and you're like, "Okay, we'll put it in a container." But uh, without knowing the entire workflow, uh, it's it's hard to know whether the solution is going to work for them because even if step one in the workflow is completely command line based and non-interactive, step number three might be part of, uh, and it could be part of the same application in the container, it might be uh, completely interactive and GUI based, you know, with something, visualization of whatever. And uh, it, 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 uh, it adds more complexity and it, it adds more uh, ways in which the container uh, can break when it comes to uh, setting up X-forwarding and making all those things work because all that X-forwarding stuff has to be, uh, all those libraries have to be installed inside the container and most often we don't uh, because you know we don't think about it when we are building a container and containers are generally pretty bare bones. Um, they're, they don't, come um, with, a bunch, with, with a lot of uh, ancillary packages. It, it, they're pretty bare bones, so stuff like X-forwarding doesn't, isn't in there, and even if you install it in there, you know, it might take a while to make everything work. And then this is sort of singularity specific. Uh, I mean, this, this happened a couple of times over the last one year, but in the last three, four months, um, there have been a lot of security updates and uh, version releases. Uh, there have been four in the last four months. Um, you know, there's there's been a security issue, so we are releasing a new version. Stop using this. Stop start using that, etc. And it's it's hard for us to keep up and uh, keep our user base informed about hey that version you're using that's gone. There's a new one that you have to start using. So that's been. Um, that, that has been new. We'll see how that works out in the future. Um, I found this out in uh, just last month, uh, some latest news, current state of the status of the Singularity project. Um, so it started off as a project uh, out of LBL, but it has been spun off, I think, uh, and, and now it is privately funded by a group called R Store, a venture capital capital firm. And um, they have a team of 15 people working full time on this project, which is good. Uh, the current uh, information that I have says uh, that every line of code that they write is gonna be uh, publicly available on GitHub, but they, they, they reserve the right to um, release um, a singularity pro version, or, or they, they, they actually have it. You can go buy it on their website. You can, uh, the, the, they have a singularity pro version, uh, which is available for $30 per host per year right now, uh, when I checked yesterday. Um, that'll give you a standardized release cycle, security and bug fixes, etc. You can also pay for support if you, if you want that. Um, so obviously, you know, having this project be uh, a well-supported project with people working on it full time is good on one hand, uh, because maybe you'll get better release cycles and overall a better product. But uh, you know, is there demand to make it sustainable and for them to work work this out? I don't know. So uh, we'll see how 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 things go with this. So that uh, finishes the first part of it. I think that was uh, 30 minutes. So uh, any questions so far? Okay, so we can uh, pass these uh, training accounts. I'll do that on the side. Right, uh, if you want a training account, uh, please raise your hand. Is this visible? Can you read this? Should I make the font bigger? Yeah. 
this is good. I think this is good. So I'm on, uh, did everybody get in? Any problems getting in? Logging in? Okay. So uh, I'm in my home directory on Carbonate. Uh, I have the singularity module already loaded, but if you, you should probably load it. So singularity, I module load singularity. Uh, we have 245, which is the latest version. Maybe, I, I think 246 came out like yesterday. So, you know, uh, five releases in four months. <laughs> so, uh, months, months, yeah. So, um, let me go to the uh, installation directory. I'm having connectivity issues. Is Wi-Fi broken for anybody else? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I should just disconnect and reconnect. That is weird. Yeah. Okay, I'm back in. So going to the uh, singularity. So this is the uh, installation directory and we have uh, standard stuff and in Etsy singularity, we have a config file. And this is where you, you can set things like uh, which Okay, why don't I go uh, one after the other? Um, so, you know, do you, do you want to pass through Etsy password? Do you want to pass through Etsy group? Yes. Um, do you want to mount proc, sys? So we usually you would set this to yes, but we have a weird situation where our <laughs> home directories are a series of symlinks that cause problems. So we set mount home equal to no, uh, just to be sure. Uh, this, this was the only way we could make it work. So we don't mount home uh, outright, but we mount it manually by giving the path. So mount slash temp, yes. Uh, and, and these are the, so under bind path, these are the paths we are uh, passing, passing in through to the uh, sing, uh, containers manually. So we have uh, n home and u. These are, these two combined give us the home directories. Um, we have ndc2, which is the uh, Luster file system. We have nsoft, which is where we install all the software on the system. Uh, and, and we have DC van, which is a 
which is another list of file system. So you can decide what all files you want to pass through. If, if we go to uh, the Cray machine, you'll see a couple of other uh, paths in there pointing to some Cray drivers and NVIDIA drivers. Um, and then you have the option to enable or disable user bind control. What that means is uh, users can bind specific locations on the base system inside the container. So let's say in addition to all this stuff, they want to pass through you know, their home directory slash miscellaneous into a root folder on the container, they can do that um, if this is enabled. It, it, it will be a command line option when they run the singularity command. So enable overlay is another uh, thing that you can uh, enable or disable. What this gives you is the ability to bind mount paths inside the container to locations that do not exist inside the container. So let's say you want to pass through NDC2, but there is no NDC2 inside the container that you just got from Docker Hub. With this option, it's, it'll still appear as if it all worked. So it, it actually works. So uh, that is a good option. And this only works for Red Hat 7. This is something that is not available on RHEL 6 or Cree 5. Um, here is an option to limit the number of container owners. We don't do this, uh, but you can list a bunch of usernames that are uh, approved container uh, owners. Also container paths. Um, that covers the singularity con uh, config file. Uh, any questions? Okay. Going back to the presentation. Um, we covered this. Um, this is this talks about how to bootstrap a singularity container file. Uh, I, that that's right. So uh, yeah, we cannot do the previous thing because we are not. So we're not going to do that. Uh, going to singularity uh, shell. So the singularity shell command lets you shell into a container file, um, and you know obviously you, you're done inside the container. It's it's only it's it's read only. If you want that in a writable mode, again you have to be root. Uh, let me play with a um, couple of containers that I have. In a couple of minutes, we'll build. A, we'll all build a couple of containers, and then we can play with them. Um, here are some uh, containers that I've built for myself, so I can do something like singularity shell CentOS seven dot image, and then I'm logged in. Um, you can check and make sure that I'm actually logged in, or I'm, I'm in a different, uh, I'm in a, in a container rather than in the previous uh, environment. You can check, for example, um, the OS version. Uh, it says CentOS 7, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can check if the uh, file systems have all been mounted properly. So we have slash temp. And if you go to the slash temp, it is actually the slash temp from the system. It's got so much stuff in it. So, and then we have uh, NDC2, the uh, Lustre file system. We have NU, the uh, the home directories. For example, I can do where is my home? It says that, and then I CD and I go to the home. I, I land in the home directory. If you don't have the home directory, I think you. I put in slash root or somewhere. So, uh, any questions? Yeah. So the yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, 
the single uh, the container root file system stuff like slash user slash root etc is not writable but all the file systems that you have passed through the home directories the lesser file system slash temp etc are all writable and then once you write stuff there and get out of your container the environment is gone but whatever you wrote in those on those file systems still persists um, let me do the uh, show you the bind mount example. So overlay is turned on, so uh, we can bind random stuff to random places and it all works. So let me do this. I want to bind mount this particular location uh, where I have singularity files inside the container. So singularity shell dash b is the, uh, is the flag to bind stuff. So I'll say this path to slash images singularity and, and that location does not exist but I'll just go with it and uh, the image name so that worked fine um, it doesn't show up here but if I go to sla slash uh, singularity Oh, image is dash singularity, okay. So if I go there, you know, I can see the images from my DC2 scratch location inside the container, but at a different location. So this, this brings a lot of flexibility because the stuff that you download from Docker Hub will not have customized locations for the center where you're running the container at. Um, So we covered this, user defined bind points. Um, so obviously you can shell into a container and uh, do things um, interactively, but what if you want to put this in a batch job and then not have any control over it? So you can do that too. So instead of um, the singularity shell uh, command, we'll, we'll use the exec command. So singularity exec um, name of the uh, container file and then um, the command that you want to run. So I just want to run the uh, see what's in the OS release file. So I'll say cat etc OS release. So, um, so what this did was you executed this etc OS release command, uh, cat etc OS release command inside this image by running singularity exec. And it used to, it was kind of slower, uh, some uh, couple of versions back, but it, it's now gotten faster. Um, so we covered this already. Um, well, we can, demonstrate this also, but I think, uh, so uh, let's see. So, single, so what I'm trying to do is demonstrate that you cannot change user once you're inside the container. Um, so singularity shell center seven dot image. So um, inside the container, it tells me that I'm a Thota and Outside the container also, I'm that same user. Um, once you're inside, um, obviously you can't, uh, yeah, you can't change, uh, become root. And I think, you, I haven't seen this, I cannot do this now, but I, I think one of my sysadmins put in the right password and then still could not become root once she was inside the container. I think the, 
the memory that it consumes per uh, each of these uh, loopback devices is pretty tiny, like 16 megabytes or something. It, it, the, the file system, uh, I mean, there's some memory that is used, but the entire file system doesn't sit in the memory. Um, the other thing you can do is, uh, while you cannot build containers yourself, you can pull containers out of Docker Hub or Singularity Hub. So what you can do is, for example, using the singularity pull command. Um, so I'll say singularity pull Docker Ubuntu. So by um, running this command, okay, so I already did this earlier, so I'm gonna delete that first. So by running this command, you're just pulling down uh, a bare bones Ubuntu container out of Docker. Um, then it has, um, this one? Oh, right, so, so without, um, giving a specific version here. So Ubuntu colon uh, version name or some release name, without giving that uh, information, you just pull whatever is considered the latest according to Docker. And that might change from day to day. So I think that is what this warning is saying. You're, you're not gonna produce the same image on repeated pull. Whereas if you go to singularity registry, you have to give specific version names, or maybe they're just trying to encourage people to use Singularity Hub, I don't know. Um, so that is that, and then I can look at uh, the image file that was just downloaded. Uh, it's 40 megabytes, ubuntu.simg. Um, and, and so this is one way to do it. You pull something down, save it as a file, it's persistent, you have it, it doesn't change, you're good to go. The other way you can do it is um, by shelling into a non-persistent um, container environment. So instead of singularity pull, I'll say something like singularity shell, but then give it a Docker URL. So. So when I do this, the f a file is not created, it's not saved, I just get an environment, and then once I exit the uh, session, everything is lost other than the files that you have uh, written to local, lo uh, local file systems. And because of the uh, enable overlay option turned on, we will still have access to all the file systems at the center. Without that option, if you just uh, pull something down from Docker, uh, you won't be able to have all your file systems mounted inside. So far, so good. Um, I did this. So uh, let me quickly demo Singularity Hub as well. Um, I'll go log into singularityhub.org. Okay. So um, I approved one of my um, repositories, author slash singularity for use with this singularity hub. And if I go to the regular GitHub, I can show you what's in it. Um, 
So I just have a single file in this repository uh, called Singularity, and this is a um, bootstrap file. It's gonna build Docker, uh, Ubuntu, the latest version of Ubuntu from Docker. That's all it's gonna do. Um, but every time I make a change to this um, file, a new um, container is built here. So if I go here, hmm, there was an error. So let's see. Let's. I'll, I'm gonna make a change here, and see. Is, let's see how that works. So, okay. Yeah, this apt. Okay, this uh, this command. You know, apt get install vim thing. Ask for a. You know, do you want to go ahead? And that did not work. I'm just gonna remove it. So and then leave it. Save it. Um, So once I made this change, um, this thing is supposed to start building it again. So now it says running. Uh, in a couple of minutes, it'll say the image has been built, and then you can you'll see a download link, and you can download it to wherever, and then go with it. Any questions? So, uh, so I talked about uh, singularity environment controls, uh, the way you can uh, pass through your base operating system environment inside your container or not. There are a couple of uh, flags and uh, environment variables that you can export to make that happen. So if you do something like singularity shell dash dash contain, uh, the container is completely uh, separated and will not share anything, uh, any environment with the base operating system, uh, whereas normally it would share a bunch, most of it. Um, you can also pass through specific environment variables uh, on the command line when you launch something. Okay, let's see how this is going. Still building. Um, there's also the option to inspect a container. So if you programmatically want to see what's inside the container and but don't want to manually shell into it or explore it, uh, if, the, if the container is properly signed and labeled, uh, you can run singularity inspect uh, container name and then it'll tell you. And you can also specify the format in which you want the output and you know. If you specify JSON, you'll get output like this. Um, and, and this is something that comes in handy every now and then. Uh, you try to be efficient and create, in, create a container that is 100 megabytes, and then you like the container, you start adding stuff to it, and you don't want to build something, build a new container and go, go back to scratch, so you want to add to this, so you can so you have to make the container file bigger, so you can do that. Uh, you don't have to uh, be root to do this, and the command is singularity expand file name, and that works. Uh, okay, so um, my uh, container is ready, so I'll go look at the status. says it's all good this time. Um, I can also uh, just click this download button and no, that, that is just the recipe. 
Um, so Oh, right. I don't have to download it manually. I just do singularity pull and then I download it. <laughs> so that's how that works. And let me try the uh, singularity expand uh, command on uh, the uh, file that I just made. So I'll try something like singularity expand um, into that this. Um, Okay, well, maybe this has been deprecated and changed. Um, so batch use, uh, we, we have a reservation uh, on the scheduler. Uh, if you want to uh, submit a job and run a command, you're welcome to. Uh, you just have, the usernames have all been added to a reservation, so you can just submit a job and you know, get the batch experience experience with singularity. Um, you, you just put, uh, create a job script and then put the commands that you want to run uh, inside the job script. So, um, and also uh, there is a another command called singularity run, uh, which, which lets you execute the container itself. So you don't, you're not, you're not, uh, passing more commands or flags at the end of it, but rather you're inside the container, if you put a, put all the things that you want to run in a file called singularity. So I guess that's, that's the metaphor here. So um, at slash singularity, you have a script that, that executes a bunch of things and those things get executed when you run the command singularity run image file. Um, Bad job submission example. Um, let me do it. I think I have five minutes, and this is, I think, the last slide. So let me. I'll do this. So I'm going to copy this to a file. Um, I submitted my job.
serves me right for not using one of the training accounts. I use my own account. I don't think I'm part of the reservation, so it's not running any <laughs> anytime soon.